This guide is to help people optimize their Atlas in Solo Self Found. In general, Atlas progression and how to set up a shaped Atlas with as minimal use of sectants to remove bad maps as possible. I have some useful links in the description of this video and I highly recommend checking them out. I also have a written version of this guide linked in the descriptions. There is some room for choice, but the core of this is to get to excavation for tier 6 Shaper Orb as soon as possible, while also getting a good bonus in your Atlas and to maximize the chances of finding uh, your needed maps. In order to do this, we need to understand how to obtain maps and how the maps drop in Atlas in general. Also for the sake of simplicity, when I say unlocked during this guide, it means a map can drop, but its bonus is not completed. And when I say completed, it means with the bonus objective completed. Due to the length of this guide, I have split it in five different sections. Uh, part one, rules of obtaining maps. Part two, white maps. Part three, yellow maps. Part four, red maps. And finally, part five, alternative way of progression for yellow maps. Also, if you find something to be incorrect, please let me know in the comments. Here are general rules for map drops and how to obtain them. One, any map that is unlocked can drop as long as it's within drop level restrictions. Generally, this means that you will find up to plus one from magic and rare monsters to plus two from map bosses. Exceptions to this rule are strong boxes with plus levels and specific map bosses such as Olmec Sanctum. Two, logged maps can only drop if you're doing a map that is adjacent to it. This is very important to understand as we will be utilizing this rule the most in order to get a proper atlas bonus. Unique maps can only drop if the base for it is unlocked. So for example, Car Blide, the walls back then, won't drop naturally unless you have Underground River unlocked. You can, however, still get it from uh, Divination cards. And an exception to this rule is Sana missions. When you are inside a Sana mission, you may find locked maps. 3. Zana can sell locked maps. Her shop will reset after you do her daily, regardless if you completed it successfully or if it failed. Leveling her up also resets the shop, so be sure to buy all the maps that you need from her before leveling her up. Zana will start selling you maps right after you complete your first map, regardless if you have completed her mission or not. 4. You can upgrade three same maps to usually a plus one tier adjacent map. In a quite a few cases, a map has two different adjacent plus one maps connected to it, which means that only one of those maps can be obtained by the plus one recipe. Rules 1 and 2 allow us to increase the chances of getting that second map by a huge amount. Here's an example. We are doing a factory map. It has adjacent maps, channel and cavern, but three factories drain into a channel. This means that the only way to get cavern is to either buy it from Zana, which is RNG, finding it while doing Zana missions, which is also RNG, or to run maps adjacent to it. In this case, Factory. The reason you really can't run Phantasmagoria or Waste Pool, which also are adjacent to it, is that we need to use the strategy I'm about to explain all the way to tier 9 maps. So if you have unlocked every single tier 3 map in your Atlas, except Cavern, your chances of finding a Cavern while doing it Factory, when a plus one map is about to drop, is one in eight, because any of the three uh, tier three maps can drop. 
if you haven't unlocked any tier 3 maps, the chance of finding that cavern when a tier 3 map is about to drop in a factory is now 1 in 2. So it's a lot easier to get. Now you probably already figured out that in order to get all the maps unlocked, you can't unlock every single new map that you find immediately, as it will lower the chances at finding specific maps by quite a bit. And finally, rule number five. When shaping a map to plus five levels, it is considered its original tier plus five in the map drops, so you could remove a tier 5 map from the pool of unlocked tier 5 maps to increase your odds at finding a different tier 5 map. Same way it also makes it harder to find other maps in tier 10. Shape maps upgrade to plus 1 tier of its level in the same corner in the atlas. Trading shape maps allows us to do two things. To skip maps in specific tiers, most useful in tiers 10s and above, while also getting maps that we want unlocked. To get maps that you would otherwise have to buy from Zana, find during a mission, or find in an adjacent map. Best example of this is Barrows, and we get to that in a while. If you're confused at any point during the guide on how or why something is done, please read the rules I just went through. Everything is done within those rules. Try to complete bonus on every tier 1 to tier 10 map while unlocking if if you can. However, for red maps, you should always unlock it first because they need to be rare and corrupted for the bonus. And when you corrupt the map, it can make it too hard or straight up change the map into a different map. During the progression, remember to use 3 to 1 or plus 1 recipe to obtain new maps and to check Zana every time she levels or when you do her daily for new maps. Also keep in mind, you might not get the perfect progression on your atlas, but this is the optimal uh, route or order to go if you want to optimize your chances at finding the maps that you can't normally obtain from 3 to 1 uh, recipe. Now that we have the rules and restrictions out of the way, let's get into the actual progression parts in the guide. So here's the atlas in a nice little tool. The link for the tool will be provided in the description, but basically it's a tool to plan your atlas. You can uh, mark maps as complete, which increases the uh, bonus, which is displayed in the middle. You can sextant maps and plan the mods on them. I won't be using this in this guide at all. And then you can shape maps. So it uh, shows them as their uh, shaped version. And then uh, it shows the this this blue uh, ring here means that this map has a shaper orb. So we start off by completing oops completing every tier one map. While you're doing the tier one maps, the moment you get your hands on a beach, factory, and oasis. Just unlock them. Don't do ghetto at this point. And the reason for that is if you have ghetto, whenever a tier 2 map drops, it lowers the chance of getting factory, beach, or oasis. And since we need to be running these three tier 2 maps until we get grotto, cavern, and marshes. It's not a good idea to unlock ghetto. Once you do have cavern marshes and grotto, unlock ghetto. And if you can, you should first unlock sewer. Because we need a graveyard. And if sewer is unlocked, 
it can drop whenever a tier 3 is to drop while running the other maps. So it's not end of the world if you can't, but you should try to unlock super first. And we can unlock every tier 3 map at this point as well. And the first tier 4 map we unlock is Graveyard. And the reason is Academy. We need to get it. And this is the only... It's not connected to any tier 3 map. It's only connected to Graveyard and Spider Lair. And we're not there, so we'll be running Graveyard until we find it. Graveyard trade ups into a tower, so we actually have to run it. Once you do find the Academy, you can unlock Acid Lakes and Phantasmagoria for Primordial Pool and Pit. If you do find Pit before Primordial Pool, you may unlock Waste Pool, because it can also drop Primordial Pool. So now we have two out of four tier four maps that can uh, yield a Primordial Pool. After you have Pit and Primordial Pool, you can unlock rest of the tier four maps There they are. And the only tier 5 you should unlock at this point is a peninsula. And the reason for that is ramparts. It's the only connected map to ramparts from the tier 5 maps, but it trades into a wharf, so we actually have to run it to get it. And the other one is a thicket. But it can also drop from spider layer. But the rampart is the big reason why only peninsula. So once you find rampart, you may also unlock spider layer. And at this point, I would also unlock burial chambers. So the moment you find ramparts, I would unlock spider layer and burial chambers. The reason for the reason why we do unlock burial chambers already is that we have two tier 5 maps that can drop a thicket and then we have burial chambers which we need three to make into a wall city unless you find it and we the wall city is the first tier 6 map that we unlock so you want to get it as early as possible and so after you do get the uh, the thicket and ramparts now you can unlock rest of the tier fives also while you're running like at any point during the progression uh, if you find the unique maps whether it's from actual drop in a map or from a divination card you can complete it if you can as long as uh, you don't do Obar's curse throw or uh, car played uh, the boss back then. We need to save these for later. At this point in the progression, there's two different ways to continue. The first option is cheaper, but also slower, at least in theory, as you could always get lucky with map drops, I guess. It uses the same idea as how we went through tier one to tier five maps, which is basically limiting the amount of maps in any specific tier at any given time, which then increases the chances of finding specific maps in that tier. And then the second option is faster, but also more expensive, as we'll be shaping maps in order to obtain the specific maps that we need, for example, uh, barrows and excavation. And not only it's faster, it's also more reliable in the long run as it somewhat reduces the RNG of needing to find a map when you have other maps in the same tier. But more about that in part 5 in the guide. Okay, yellow maps. Like I mentioned earlier, we need wall city, so we unlock it first. Reason being Arachnid 2. So we run this as the only tier 6 maps all the way till we get Arachnid 2. 
once we find the arachnid tomb, we can then uh, finish unlocking rest of the tier 6 maps. And while you are like unlocking the tier 6 maps, if you find, if and when you find cells, castle ruins and armory, you can also complete, uh, unlock them. We need them because of arena, bog and burrows. So after you find these three maps, you may unlock rest of the tier 7s however if you do find bog and arena first and you're absolutely disgusted of running cells you may unlock bog as well because it has a 50 50 chance uh, sorry it's a uh, one out of three to get a barrows whenever a tier 8 map is to drop at this point but i don't i don't unlock it in this guide right now because i want to showcase the uh the uh, the option like the uh progression without the small uh, exceptions so once you have barrows book and arena complete the rest of the tier sevens I think I have them all. Yep. And then we unlock a tropical island as our only tier 8. And the reason for that is three. Like we like I mentioned earlier, we could have done like uh, have bog earlier already, but it would uh limit the amount of tropical islands dropping, which means we get the reef slower. Like it takes longer to get the reef. But once you do find a reef. And if you if you didn't get the barrows, then unlock bog at this point, and then just run bog and tropical as your tier eight. But I'm assuming you have the barrows. So we find reef. Now we can unlock rest of the tier eight maps. And we will only unlock promenade and temple as the tier 9 maps. We need temple to be unlocked because three of those trade into malformation and three malformation trade into excavation. And excavation is kind of the uh, pillar in the whole like the, the whole purpose of the guide. So to get the uh, shape rock from there because it allows for a more progression in the Atlas by skipping the bad red maps. But so we need a total of nine temple maps to do that. Usually people tend to avoid completing tier tens. If you do, however, complete a malformation, it might make it a bit faster to get, get, get the excavation. But I will be continuing this guide without completing uh, tier tens. The reason why we did promenade, well, uh, with the temple at the same time, is we need museum. I mean, it's a one bonus in the atlas, but so it's not like absolutely necessary. But it also, after you unlock it, you may start uh, finding a putri cloister, which is another atlas uh, bonus. And we just run the just run promenade, and I guess you could run temples as well. In hopes of finding malformations, but you could also just stock up uh, temples until you have nine of them. And while we're running promenade, we are also aiming to get a colonnade because it has the tier five shape orb, which allows to shape a tier five into tier ten. Usually, it's either a mesa, dunes, or a primordial pool. If or like the moment you find museum, you may actually unlock 
rest of the tier 9s right away at that point. It slowers the process of getting the temples for the malformations for the excavation, but it increases the bonus in your atlas, which helps you sustain the map pool since we are already at tier 8. Okay, we are getting into our uh, raid maps. Uh, you may also remove the colonnade right after you have your desired tier 10, but let's continue from the excavation. You up obtain finally your first excavation. You should first run it with easy mods just to unlock it so it can drop. And the reason for that is that in order to get the tier 6 shape or orb, you have to run a rare corrupted excavation. So if you were to make a, your first excavation into a rare and corrupt it, there is two outcomes that may completely uh, fuck up your plans. One being it upgrades the uh, map into a plus one, so you would have a necropolis instead of excavation, so can't even do the map anymore. Second one is it may roll it, re-roll the mods on the map all the way to eight mods, which may can make the map borderline impossible to do. So after you have the unlock on unlock on it first, the second one that you find you should uh, alt regal for like two easy easy mods and then corrupt. Uh, on top of the two previously mentioned corrupted uh, outcomes, there's also two uh, other ones. Nothing happens, and then it makes the map unidied with the same mods. So that's why we want to have a, as easy rare map as possible. Because on average, I guess, half the time, it's not gonna change the mods. Now, after you finally get your shape orb, you have two options. You could uh, straight up shape the desired tier 6 that you want, probably a strand. Or if you want to do some proper progression in your red maps, you should either shape war or a rampart. And the reason for that is the next shape orb here is an, uh, like the tier 7 shape orb is an estuary. And that means that you would either have to complete arsenal to have another tier 10 and run it until you find three chateaus. And then you would have to remove the arsenal later. So we don't want to do that. We want to save our sextants for something else than removing the maps. If you don't complete arsenal, that means that every time you run a crypt, you have basically all tier 9s completed. So that's, you're not getting many crypts. You would have to find 9 arsenals, which is a 50-50 chance, as long as you have removed the colonnade from your atlas, and you have uh, shaped the uh, tier 5 into a 10. If you didn't shape the tier 5 into a 10, then every plus one map would be an arsenal, so it would make it like slightly easier to do. But I would still shape either of these, either tier eleven, and then once you get three of them, just trade them up into an estuary, and then you repeat the same thing with estuary as you did with excavation. First, you un unlock it with the easy mods, and then the second one you make rare in the corrupt. Once you have unlocked the estuary, you may unshape the warf ramparts, run another corrupted excavation for another orb, and then uh, shape the uh, desired tier 6. So, in my case, it's going to be a strand. And at that point, you can completely remove excavation from your atlas. So that's the first time you actually have to remove red map. And now we have the uh, estuary done. We get the shape rope from there. 
the next shape orb is in high gardens so we have to shape ashenwood into a tier 12 get three of those trade into high gardens unlock high gardens just like the previous two at that point you may unshape ashenwood if you don't want to keep it run another estuary corruptor estuary to get another orb to shape your desired tier 7 in my example uh, in my case it's gonna be an rank 2 or obviously if you don't then don't and then you may remove it if you want to it's a nice map and by running estuary you would eventually get volcano so I recommend keeping it until you have Volcano because that saves up uh, another 5 regrets and 20 chisels because if you don't do it by trading up 3 Shuffle Faced or Beacon into Volcano it has a tier 9 shape Orb which we might need for uh, the, uh, the bottom left and bottom right corner even in the top left corner and to make the progression into tier 15s so if you don't do that you need to use the shaper orb you get from high gardens and shape bog or cemetery into 13 and trade three of these into a volcano and then you have to unshape them later so i would i would recommend keeping estuary until you have volcano unlocked get the orb from volcano if you want the tier 10 shape orb from overgrown ruin shape overgrown shrine into tier 14 three of these trade into overgrown ruin and now you have your tier 10 shape orb and with that you can complete a tier 10 map for example courtyard if you want to trade them up to or Fortress of Phoenix or any other tier map in the in their own corners to get the Guardian in there. I personally Joe wouldn't uh, use the tier 15 orb to get three tier 15s to trade into a tier 16 map. I would just keep getting a new tier 9 shape orb from Volcano and getting the tier 15 maps, so Colosseum and uh, Abyss by uh, shaping a temple and like cows and these trade into Colosseum and Abyss now you may know that there's two unique maps that have a tier 8 and tier 9 shape orb Obas has a tier 8 and Poor Choice has a tier 9 so you could potentially if you have multiple of them completely ignore the high gardens and even the volcano if you wanted to but regardless if you have obas which is the uh, same as the high gardens orb i would i would still complete the volcano because it's not a terrible tier 14 map And that's pretty much it, I guess. Also worth mentioning that if you do have a car plate and Obas, the moment you have your desired tier 10 and tier 11 in your atlas, you, you are free to do them. If you don't at any given time get car plate from a divination card, you probably need to comp uh, unlock an underground river at some point so the car plate can drop because unique maps drop after the base map is uh, unlocked but that's another three sextants to remove the underground river later so hopefully you get it from the divination cards uh, next I'm gonna showcase the alternative way to go through the tier 6 maps 
or the yellow maps using the same method like the strategy as we just used in the red maps but you probably already somewhat we figured out how to do that i'm gonna showcase it anyways okay so the second option for progressing through the tier uh, the yellow tier maps this strategy optimizes Shaper Orb usage from as early as the Tier 2 Shaper Orb that you get from Ashenwood. And you might use the Shaper Orb from uh, Spider Forest at some point as well, but it's not essential in the progression. You can and probably should use parts of this strategy even if you are not completely following this. So you can combine this and the the previously showcased uh, strategy together to some extent. This method can cost you up to around 30 regrets and 120 chisels, depending on how ham you go on unshaping and shaping a new map in order to get a like specific target maps most likely won't be that much. The main maps are Ashenwood, Bog, Potentially Reef, Colonnade, Excavation, Estuary, and then, like mentioned earlier, High Gardens and Volcano. Be sure to check Zana every time she has a new inventory because if he, if she has an arachnid tomb, barrows, reef, arena, it's it's five regrets and twenty chisels, pretty much. If if you had to use shape orbs in order to get them. Uh, in this strategy, we don't really go tier uh, maps like by tiers, but rather we are targeting these specific maps. And once we get we get those, we start like complete like unlocking the rest of the tiers. So there's two ways of obtaining the excavation, apart from the one that was explained and showcased in the uh, uh, part three, four, is by getting the uh, tier four shape orb from Reef, uh, shaping a uh, graveyard to tier nine, getting nine of those. Okay, you get three malformation and then an excavation. The other way is getting a colonnade, shaping spider layer to tier 10, and three of them trade into an excavation. You can use either one, or you can a like uh, use both, and whichever gives you the excavation first, you just finish that. That's what I, I will be doing. And now for the actual uh, example. So, since the target is Ashenwood, the first tier 6 we unlock is Quarry. You could potentially start this even before you have unlocked every tier 5. Uh, previously, you only unlock pre uh, Peninsula in the other strategy. If you want to start doing this, you should also unlock. Mesa while you unlock Peninsula. So you can then trade three uh, Mesas into a quarry. You could run the Mesas, but it's one in three to find it. So let's assume only a one plus map drops per Mesa. It's basically the same if you just trade them up. And you could be running the Peninsulas and hopefully get the ramparts. So it doesn't really make a big difference. But you can start it earlier. So keep quarry as your tier six. Once you finally get the ashen wood unlocked, you may complete uh, spider forest, strand, warf, and wall city. Wall city again because of the arachnid tomb. If you don't find it, doesn't matter. You can later use. Uh, 
shape orb on a jungle valley and three of them trades into anarchy too but we still unlock it because it would save it, it will save us currency if you wish to unshape the jungle valley in the future if you don't by all means save it at this point already if you enjoy running it so once you get the ashen wood you get the shape orb you shape faction into the seven three of them trade into your barrows you at the point when you have ashen wood uh, completed for the shape orb you basically could start doing some other tier 7s but i would wait until you actually have three of them three shape factories so once you do once you get them you get the barrows and when you have barrows done you unshape the factory because fuck that map and then you uh, unlock castle ruins and armory castle rooms because we want to increase the chances of getting the bog again and armory because of the arena you don't actually have to un uh, unlock the armory since uh, shaping ghetto into tier 7 three of them trades into an arena but that's another five regrets and 20 chisels so we might as well do it because atoll is also a nice map and there's, there's some use in getting into atoll and getting a temple soon and obviously we run barrows because it's connected to a bog and a promenade which and promenade is then connected to colonnade and a museum museum is not as important now as it was previously because we may shape grotto into a tier 8 at some point and three of them trades into a museum. So there's no like rush into getting it if you're willing to pay the cost of the unshaping orb. And the bog has a tier 3 shaper orb, which is essential when uh, going for the reef. As we can, we first with the, three, the tier 3 shaper orb, we shape wall pyramid into tier 8, and three of them trade into your reef. And then Reef goes into a graveyard. And then we have the first map that lets us obtain excavation rather fast. The moment you actually have Bog uh, unlocked, you may unlock every tier 7 and tier 8. That is basically the... Uh, I guess once you get it, it allow like it gives so much extra bonus in the atlas. So that's why it's trying to somewhat maximize the chances of getting it. So there's only there was only barrows, castle ruins, and then arena. Uh, sorry, uh, armory. So two out of three maps has basically a fifty-fifty chance of getting it. Uh, Castle Ruins is actually one, one out of three because it can be Cemetery, Bog, or Barrows when a plus one drops. But if you find a Barrows, no big deal because we want to run it anyways. And then a Barrows has a 50 50 chance to get a Bog or a Barrows bag if, when you run it. And then plus one will be a Promenade. So when you get the Promenade, whether it's before Bog or after, instantly do it. Uh, unlock it because we need to be either running it for the museum and the colonnade colonnade being the main or you can always just trade three of them up to it i would i would honestly run it it's a nice map once you have the three uh shape wall pyramids you unshape it and uh you may do reef now i'm personally gonna do reef um then i'm gonna explain why you there's like why you shouldn't that's another, another option you don't actually have to do it so shape the reef uh, ex uh, unlock the reef and like complete the reef get the shape orb and then you have the shape graveyard 
the moment you actually get the colonnade is the point when I would uh, compl uh, complete the reef and shape graveyard and then uh, also unlock temple. I would keep the promenade as the only tier 9 until you have colonnade because then we get this spider there. But if you have a lot of atolls, peers, even mud geysers, because mud geyser trace into peer, peer into atoll, atoll into temple, and temple into malformation, into excavation. If you have a lot of these maps here, you might opt out from uh, shaping spider layer, because having two tier 9s out of four that trade up to into excavation, it's a rather good chance. And that saves you 5 regrets and uh, 20 chisels. But I will personally, to increase my chances of getting there faster, whenever a tier 10 drops, it could be a, like it would be a spider layer or a colony. So I will keep promenade as the only tier 9, until I get a colonnade, you get the orb, and then you get the spider layer. Once you have the spider layer, you may actually complete all tier 9s. Or just keep the for the uh, shape graveyard, promenade, reef, and temple. Depends. Like the atlas percentages, like the bonus is pretty good. This is not including any unique maps, so it might be like 65%, which is, which is not that bad at all. And once you get the excavation, regardless of how you get it, on shape, spider layer, run uh, colonnade again, and shape whatever tier 5 you want into tier 10, and then you may remove colonnade from your atlas. And now we are at the exact same spot in the progression as we were after doing uh, the other strategy. Point being this being somewhat more reliable and faster. So at this point we literally just continue with the same exact strategy for the red maps as we did previously. So from excavation we get the varf slash ramparts into 11, get estuary from estuary to ashenwood into high gardens into box slash cemetery into volcano which then or can ruin or any other. Or using the uh, tier 8 and 9 or uh, shape orbs from Obas and uh, not dead and taxes, Borgers. So, yeah. There's also the uh, tier 10 shape orb in dead and taxes, so you don't have to actually do the uh, overgrown ruin if you can if you can handle it. Some builds can, some, some don't. Uh, some builds can, some, some builds don't. But yeah, uh, this is pretty much the guide. It's a long guide, but I wanted to go through a couple different options, so it doesn't come out as you know, Carve you forgot. You can do it like this or this or this. I'm just I'm showing a couple examples within the rules that I provided in the very very first part of the video. So if you understand the the rules section properly, you can then adjust the system however you want. Yeah, hope you enjoyed. And hopefully uh, there isn't a massive changes to Atlas in 3.0, because then this guide has to be done again. Bye bye.